should be together regularly all the way from the beginning. And when, when we have uh, grill parties, the dogs are there. And of course they are allowed to look at what's on the grill. Of course. <laughs> I mean, they are a part of the party, aren't they? <coughs> Going together with friends. Having gatherings in my garden or other people's gardens. We just sit around chatting and having a cup of coffee. Uh, and having a good time and the dogs go around doing whatever they want to do calmly and nicely dogs need it they really need the social aspects so as we said the social nature of a dog also means it's very hard for a dog to be left alone it's a process that must take time to learn, and they can learn it. They need to feel safe and knowing you are coming back, and they need to be old enough to be able to be responsible for their own safety. So, yeah, we talked about that. <coughs> the bare necessities are essential for good life. It has to be the ground pillar. You must not forget any of it. So, then we have what I call the extras, or whatever we can call it. It's the enrichment of life. The bare necessities is absolutely necessary there, then to have a more rich life, a more interesting life. We have some other things to add to it. And to make a life a little more enriching and interesting for dogs, mental stimulation is the most important. Mental stimulation to develop the brain and learn to cope with life and, and everything in life. And uh, I saw a very recent research that uh, in people being curious is the most important for a healthy development. It's the same in dogs. <coughs> when I do this testing of dogs, what I look for is how curious is a dog. And if it's not sufficient, sufficiently curious, we have to work on making the dog curious. Curiosity is a basic for a healthy development. So we use mental stimulation to create that curiosity too. And <coughs> they learn to cope with life because they experience different things their own way. Using their senses, taking it in, storing the experience in their brains, and that makes them mentally well balanced and managing everyday challenges. I call it vaccinating the dog against stress and fearfulness. And that's something we have to do as an extra on top of the necessities to enrich their lives and make it more worthwhile and interesting. So, <coughs> keep mental stimulation on your priority list of what to do. From the very beginning, and the whole dog's life, it's not a short period they are going to learn about this, about the environment, they, you have their whole life to do that. You learn all your life, don't you? If you go to different interesting countries when you're a child, you never go anymore because you can't learn anything more. Hopla, you are on the wrong track. <laughs> it's when we get older, maybe we are more curious, maybe we are more interested in new things than young people are. 
that makes us mentally on top. So, mental <laughs> stimulation means use of the senses. Because the senses send information to the brain, who stores it, and does things with it. And this experience, this storage <coughs> of the brain, will help the dog uh, learn new things quicker, understand other things quicker, and get much more interested in being curious and exploring. So, they have eyes to see with, let them see different things. One at a time. It doesn't need to be a whole lot of things. So I go to the market and, the, and the, 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 all the places where there's a lot of people. That's too much. Let them go out there and experience a little at a time. So they can focus on it and get it in and learn from it. They have ears to hear with. Let them get exposed to sounds, just a little at a time. I've had dogs for training who had got scared of all kinds of noises because they had been overwhelmed and flooded by noise. People thought they had to pour on them a lot of noise to get them used to it. And of course it was the opposite. It overwhelmed them completely and they shut down and got afraid of noises. So we had to start from the beginning by making them in an enriched environment have maybe a, a radio very low and soft on, something making a tinkling little sound, just small sounds in the beginning. And then making it a little more and a little more as they should cope with it and getting curious. If a dog is curious, he can learn anything. If there's something that the dog is getting a little bit afraid of, I just leave him free to do whatever he wants. And if he's free to do it, he will go there if he has curiosity enough. Most of them have, if you haven't trained it off them, which often happens. If you do a lot of obedience training with young dogs, you have, a, in the end, a dog who doesn't do anything on his own. When I was doing search and rescue training and avalanche training, I had a brilliant avalanche dog. Um, we saw in the beginning of the training, we had a, a big training session in the mountains. And there were so many of the dogs who could not go further and work independently in finding people under the snow because they had been trained for obedience their whole lives. They needed commands for every step they took. Totally useless. Totally useless for proper work. Keep their curiosity.